thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Moe Karimi, uh, a Kenyan living in Portugal, and I'm currently a student uh, pursuing my master's degree uh, in, the same, in Portugal in a, in a small town of Faro, and uh, I love open source tech. Uh, I'm a tech enthusiast. In Faro, we, I run a MongoDB meetup where we just meet with uh, fellow students and colleagues uh, just to discuss how we could use MongoDB to uh, create innovative uh, uh, solutions. I'm also a web developer, and uh, I love tea and carrot cake. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm going to talk about how mobile accessibility has uh, helped transform lives in Africa, and I'm just going to start with some facts. So the G GSMA uh, did some statistics, and as of 2015, 557 million uh, citizens had uh, connections to uh, mobile, had accessibility to mobile uh, connection. And this was a growth of about 200 million uh, from 2014, and they expect this number to grow to 725 uh, million. So in hindsight, this, the 557 million is 46% of Africa's population. So it might seem as though it's a huge number, but if you do the math, we're really not there. And so by 725 million, we expect to be at 56, uh, 57, so there's still a lot of work to be done. But the, this has contributed to close to 6% of Africa's GDP. And by 2020, it should increase to about 7.6%. Uh, uh, so in terms of broadband, we are still lagging behind. As of 2015, we were at 28%, but we expect this number to rise to 60 by 2020. So how has this uh, accessibility really transformed lives? You can't really tell by these numbers unless you've really been on the areas where it's happening. So I'm going to show you how that has just happened. So one of the main areas where we've seen transformation is the money and banking industry. I don't know if any of you has heard of M-Pesa. Yeah, uh, M-Pesa is a money, mobile money transfer uh, system in Kenya that was launched in 2007. And as of now, it's over 20 million uh, users. So like in Kenya, if you have M-Pesa, you don't really need a mobile uh, account because M-Pesa solves everything for you. So you can transfer payments. And one interesting fact is that people trans like just using M-Pesa within Kenya, we transact a lot of money than Western Union does uh, globally. And uh, this M-Pesa contributes close to 40% of Kenya's GDP. And uh, so I, if I want money, I don't have to go to the bank. I can just take my phone, send money to my friend. I can pay my bills. I can pay school fees. I can do everything with my mobile. So, and this has really helped people in remote areas where it's been really difficult to open bank accounts. And because also banks have certain criteria that people in remote areas are not able to meet. So M-Pesa solves everything for them. And this has been replicated in other African countries where we've seen uh, the whole continent jump on mobile money. And now we are seeing banks trying to work with M-Pesa and other money transfer services to, produce, to provide their services through the service. Another area has been health. A lot of applications have been developed uh, I'm going to show you about mo the model. Uh, these are some of the examples. Uh, we have the model midwife program. This has been of real great help in West Africa, especially with pregnancy, because most of the ladies or women can access uh, 
proper health care, especially when, the, when they get pregnant and stuff like that. So this program advises women during their pregnancy. You get texts through uh, voicemails. Uh, people running the app can call you, and they also send, uh, um, what are they called? Yeah, they send those things, and you can see <laughs> how your pregnancy is going. We also have the ARK. Uh, helping people in Mozambique with HIV AIDS. Uh, it sends reminders through text as well on when you should get your ARVs or when you have an appointment or when you need a checkup and all these services are free. Then we have m -Truck that helps analyze health system in Uganda where the government doesn't need to, like if a particular hospital or health center lacks in certain infrastructure, this system is able to update or inform the government in time before they, you know, they run out of resources and it may take time to procure for such services. Uh, agriculture. So agriculture is one of the main uh, bread baskets of so many African countries in Kenya. And the small scale farmer has been suffering a lot because most people who benefit from agriculture are people who own big farms and they have money and everything. So how has mobile changed the agricultural scene? So we've seen app developers or uh, mobile service providers approaching uh, small-scale farmers on how they could use the apps develop, developed to, uh, to use them for their profit. So mobile apps help in sharing with information, sharing market prices, because most of the time the small farmer doesn't know the price of the market. So this guy who owns all these uh, or has monopoly in the market is able to manipulate the market uh, on his own advantage, and thus the small scale farmers end up losing so much. They're also able to get loans through microinsurance schemes, and also, uh, yeah, they're able to know their weather information so they can plant in time. Mm -hmm. Some of the apps, uh, Sokoni, SMS 64, this is one from Kenya, provides pricing info to farmers. And ICAO is a really good one in the South of Africa where it provides dairy farmers with a service to track their cows gestation period, provides informed breeding, uh, stuff about diseases, nutrition, and the likes. Education, uh, ever since uh, 2012, there's been booming uh, talks of uh, internet and internet penetration in Africa and the potential is there. The funny thing is, Africa is so resource starved, but like in some of these countries, we have more mobile devices than the inhabitants of the nation. So what we have in schools now is kids can able, are able to download uh, libraries on their mobile phones, and which have local content. And this has really helped as more kids have been enrolled in school. And we've seen uh, the levels of literacy uh, going up. One example of an app is EduTrack. Uh, it helps track uh, the, uh, the education system or structure in, in government schools. And uh, yeah, uh, other benefits. Disaster management, this has been helpful, as, uh, especially when it comes to refugees. Uh, in Kenya, hosts a lot of refugees from Somalia. So the Kenya Red Cross has really helped uh, these, most of these refugees rec reconnect through their loved ones, where they just fill info on some database. And they are able to connect with their loved ones through SMS or something like that. Entertainment is another key area. As of now, at least, we are not consuming a lot of foreign content. So a lot of local content is being developed, but it's still not enough. So a lot of people are using 
are constantly on their phones just looking out stuff that the local scene has to provide. Activism, uh, activism this has been really key, especially in Egypt, uh, Kenya, uh, South Africa, where people are frustrated by the governments and they just pull their anger online. The problem is they just put their anger online, but they never show up on the streets in, when it's time to protest or something like that. Governance, uh, we have seen uh, US aid and uh, UK aid uh, help collect opinion polls in remote areas. And these polls, uh, uh, yeah, these polls help them in determining uh, what amount of help or what amount of money they're going to distribute when, it's, when it comes to helping or donating money to governments in Africa. So we've seen all these benefits and back at home it's really a big thing. I mean here it might not seem anything but back at home it's a really, really huge thing. I mean we've seen lives change and we hope the trend continues but I'm just gonna share with you some of the limitations to some of this, to this progress. So one of the key uh, uh, limitation is <laughs> network growth, and which is also a key driver. So most of Africa's terrain is really impossible to get through network. So we still have like more than half a billion is still not connected, and that's because of limited network growth. Also, some of these mobile service providers don't have money to in, uh, buy infrastructure for all this, so it's really challenging. In terms of affordability, most of the people still can't afford phones, and also the taxes for mobile data are quite high for some of the people. Uh, digital skills and awareness, we need to train local people on the benefits of using a mobile and also encouraging local content because in Africa we've, people have consumed a lot of foreign stuff and this has pushed uh, local, so it's boring to just watch foreign stuff so people will choose to keep away from that because oh, what is there, it's novellas or anything like that. So we need to encourage local content production and stay local, locally relevant in the scene. So yeah, so unfortunately for Africa, the only news that makes it in the media is the negative side of it. But we believe that if it works in Africa, it will work anywhere. So thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy my talk. <laughs>